Mr. Abbott here, and it's time for another boring activity explanation. This time we will be looking at patterns of change. It's an activity that's really designed to make you graph and interpret data, and more importantly, we're going to go over a procedure that will help you create a uniform scale for looking at data. Now, on the back of the front page are the four data tables that we are attempting to graph. When you look at them, the first column is going to be the independent variable. So the independent variable is always plotted on the x-axis, and then the dependent variable gets plotted on the y-axis. What are the two factors that determine what your scale is going to look like? One of them is obviously the numbers that you're trying to graph. Okay, the first one, your latitude is going from 0 to 80, so you have to cover those 80 things. The second factor, besides the numbers you're trying to graph, is the actual graph paper you have. For all four of these graphs, you've got 25 boxes going across, that's how much space you have to fit in it, and then 35 boxes going up. So we're going to have to take that into consideration when we set up or create our uniform scales. Now, in class, we've already completed graph number one, but I want to take a look at what we did. You always have to uh, identify the independent variable and the dependent variable. So latitude determines the temperature. We're doing range boxes, divide. If that's not a really nice number, then we double and we round between to see what each small little interval is. So we graphed with the interval being 5 on the x-axis and being 3 on the y-axis. Once you plotted out that data, this is what your graph for that should have looked like. So if I look at this, your horizontal axis was going across by fives. You put a label and a unit on it. The vertical axis was going up by threes. Obviously, this is an inverse or indirect relationship. Since it doesn't appear to be a nice, perfectly straight line, it's not linear, you connect it with a smooth curve. Now, the next part of this is if you get stuck, I want to look at the data tables and repeat this process. So we're looking at data table number two, the density of calcite. Okay, The volume determines the mass. A larger piece will give you more mass. So we're going to put the volume on the x-axis and the mass on the y-axis. So when we go to our blank sheet for the planning sheet, you really need a calculator to set up a graph. When we're plotting this, the volume, which is in cubic centimeters, is going to be on the x-axis, and the mass in grams gets plotted on the y-axis. Range, you do the maximum minus the minimum. So I'm looking at my data table, and I'm circling 95 and 5. When I subtract them, the range of this da data is 90. Over here, I have 256.5 and 13.5. I can toss those into my calculator, 256.5. Minus 13.5, and I find the range on this side to be 243. So I know that I've got 90 things that are going to try to fit into 25 boxes, and I have 243 is the difference between my points, and I have to try to squeeze that into 35 boxes. So 90 divided by 25. If I get a nice number, I can stop, but I'm getting 3.6. So 3.6 is not a good number to count by, so I double that. So now I want to round, and instead of saying round up, maybe we should say round between. 
what would be a nice number to count by, what will be easy for you to graph between 3.6 and 7.2, I think I would go with a value of 5. Most people count easily by 5s. All right, the y-axis. My range is 243. Okay, I'm dividing that into the 35 spaces that I'm going vertically. So I'm getting 6.9. Not a nice value to try to count by. So if I take the 6.9, oops, 6.9, and then I double it, divide then double, I get 13.2. Again, not a nice easy number. Okay, by rounding between, I'm going to get a large enough graph, but I want an interval or a spacing where it's going to be easy to plot and easy to interpret. Honestly, most people learn to count by tens pretty quickly, so we're going to look at, we're going to try to use 10 here. Now, you've got to figure out if you can start at zero. And you can start at zero if the total amount of space is going to get up to your highest number. What I'm doing is I'm going to look at this. I've got 25 boxes. Each box is going to be worth five. So if I do 25 times 5, that means I could start at 0 and get up to 125. Looking at my data, my data only goes to 95. So this side, I could start at 0. I've got 35 boxes, and there's 10 of them. So I have 35 boxes. Each box is worth 10. That's 350. Looking back at my data, my data only goes up to 256. It's going to work. I can start at zero. So I'm going to put a check at zero. Can you start the scale at zero? Yeah. So that's it. Now, if I look at my graph, okay, make sure, and this one, I filled out the scales, the volume. Each individual box is five, but I find it awkward to label every one. So I'm labeling every fifth one. Five times five is 25. So volume in cubic centimeters is going across by fives. When I look vertically, I started at zero. Each individual box, and I like putting a line there, is going to be worth 10, but I'm going to label every dark fifth line by 50s. So if we slide that scale down, you should get all the way up to 350. That one's a fairly easy one. You're going to plot the points, connect it, see what type of relationship. Um, it should be a direct relationship. The larger the volume, a bigger piece of, say, aluminum would have a greater mass. All right. Graph number three is a little different. For graph number three, looking at this data table, they're giving you the time of day versus the temperature in degrees Celsius. Once again, the time determines the temperature. So time is the independent, it goes on the x, temperature is dependent. From 8 a.m. to noon, Okay, it's going to be four hours. From noon to three is an additional three hours. So we're covering seven hours of time. If I'm looking at the range over here, the maximum, the highest temperature is usually not noon. Here it's at 130, so 28 to 15. When I subtract them, the range there is going to be 13. So let's go back to our planning page and look at what might be a good way to set up the graph. All right, the only way that I know what this is going to be is honestly by doing the math, plotting it out, making it work. So for this one, time of day goes on the x-axis and the temperature in degrees Celsius is going to go here. 
we had seven hours and the total change was 13 degrees Celsius. Same sheet of graph paper, so I have 25 boxes going across and I've got 35 boxes going up and down or vertically. Now, this is going to get, you know, some of you are going to find this challenging. Not everything works out as a whole number. So if I take 7 and I divide it into 25 spaces, I'm going to get a small decimal. So that number is going to be 0.28. Okay, that's not a good value, so I'm going to double that and I'm going to get 0.26. I have to round to a value between these. Now, there's two possibilities. Okay, sometimes thinking about fractions with this might help you. Okay, in between here, 0.5 is an obvious choice. So if I went by 0.5, that's equal to a half. That means every two boxes would be an hour. Okay, two boxes equals an hour means each line is equal to 30 minutes. That would make my graph a little smaller, but honestly the one I like here is 0.33, which is a third. A third of 60 minutes is 20 minutes, and I really think you can count by 20 minute segments. It's not that difficult. So the one that I like for this is 0.33. I'm going to say each box is a third, so if we're going by each box is a third, a half means two boxes is equal to one unit. A third would mean three boxes is equal to one unit. And if I can make the graph a little bigger, I'm going to go with a third. Now, on the y-axis, 13 is divided into 35 spaces. That gives me 0.37. I can't count by 0.37s, so I double it, and that gives me 0.74. Clearly, when I look at this, 0.5 at half would be a nice number that you can go by. A half means that every other box is equal to 1. Over here, I have 35 and 0.5, so if I have 35 boxes and each one is 0.5, that means if I start at zero, it would go up to 17.5. Okay, I'm looking at my graph, and I've got to go up to 28. I can't start at zero. If I start at 10, 10 plus 17.5 goes up to 27.5. That doesn't make it. So I'm going to select, I'm going to start at my lowest value. Can this scale start at zero? The answer is no. What value am I going to start with? If you have to, you can start right at your minimum value, which is going to be 15. Now, just to show you what this might look at, this is the toughest one. But I'm looking at my x-axis. I'm starting at 8 a.m., Every three boxes is equal to an hour, and that can get me all the way across to 3 p.m. When I'm looking vertically, I couldn't start at zero, so I start at 15, and I go every two boxes is one because my interval is 0.5. That'll get you all the way up past the value for 28 that you have to graph. Now, we're approaching 15 minutes. So I'm not going to do all the math with you on this one. I'm just going to sort of take you through the process again for graph number four, the independent and the dependent variable. It's temperature and the amount of water vapor. The temperature determines how much moisture the air can hold. So on hotter days, there's a larger capacity air can hold more water. So temperature goes on the x-axis. Oh, these are typos. This should say y-axis on all of them. I've got to fix that. Now, looking at the ranges, 90 to 20 gives me a range of 17. 
14.8 to 1.2 gives me a range of 36. My graph paper is the same. So 25 by 35, when I divide, okay, and then double, because neither one is a good number, between 2.8 and 5.6, I could go 4, I could go 5, I think I'm going to go 4 here. It'll stretch the graph out a little more. Between 0.39 and 7.8, okay, definitely I'm going to go with 0.5. So I'm rounding, not up, I'm rounding between and getting 4. Here, I'm rounding to 0.5. Okay, this one, 25 times 4 gives me up to 100, and I only have to go up to 90, so I'm okay here. 17.5, my maximum value is 14.8, so for both of these, I can definitely start at 0. Now, just to show you, and this isn't plotting the points or doing any of the graphs. You have to plot all your points and do all your graphs. But going by fours on the x-axis, five boxes is equal to 20. You could count 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, but that's a pain. Going vertically, every two boxes is one. I labeled each dark line by 2.5. Now, I hope this has set you up, helped you set up the graphs, and now you can draw the graphs, plot the points, draw the lines, interpret them, and hopefully you do well on this activity. Take care for now.